Hi folks, and in this lesson I would like to show you how to sketch a ballerina with white and black charcoal and a little bit of willow charcoal on grey tone paper. Now this is a great introduction to figure drawing because, well, you haven't got to worry about the legs, so there's only half a figure to start with. But I do take you through some tips and techniques for getting those all important proportions correct. Working on grey paper is great for two reasons. You'll know this if you've seen any of my other videos. Firstly, it helps to show off your drawing. Not entirely sure why. Maybe it's because it acts like a bit of a background. But what it definitely helps you do is see the lights and darks and midtones more easily. So a pad of grey paper is something that I recommend every artist should own. I use Strathmore. There are other brands as well. But I know that this one holds up to a range of different mediums. So charcoal, colour pencil, even pastel pencil and a little bit of watercolour. Now, if you like this lesson and your finger isn't worn out from liking and subscribing to all the other videos you're asked to like and subscribe on YouTube recently, a thumbs up would be very much appreciated or a comment or some feedback. Let me know how you get on you know, with this lesson if you're following along and I really do hope you follow along. All right, so go grab your materials or save the video if you need to follow along at another time. Whenever it is, enjoy the lesson. This next study is inspired by a pastel piece by Edgar Degas. And although he's added a little bit of colour, you can see how he's made great use of a mid-tone ground and then he's emphasised the darks and the lights. We're going to attempt the same thing, but just using black and white charcoal. And what I particularly want to try and achieve is this combination of quite detailed, refined marks with very loose, sketchy marks uh, that I think works really well, especially with figures. So here's a reference photograph that I think will work quite well. It's got some uh, nice strong darks and nice strong lights, so there's a lot of contrast going on there, which is perfect for black and white charcoal. So how am I going to approach the initial drawing of this figure? Well, in the Drawing Essentials course, I talked about starting very general with the big basic shapes or even just straight lines to find those proportions. And this time I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach. We're not going to be drawing the entire figure. So I'm not going to have to worry about things like the length of her legs. And straight away, that makes the drawing element that much easier. What I'm going to do is draw the head and the facial features in with a graphite pencil, just to make sure that we get that right. That's going to be our, our main focal point. And then we'll draw the rest of the body as we go along with our charcoal pencils. And although I'm going to draw this by eye, we will be using uh, techniques like basic shapes, negative space to help create that believable pose. So I've sketched in the head and the face, uh, very basic, with a graphite pencil. And I just want to explain a little bit about the way I went about doing this. Um, because it is a, an intricate shape and it is one that you want to get right, even though this is going to be a relatively loose study. So the way I approached this first was to look at the angle of the head. So this line here really helps us out, doesn't it? There's a nice strong angle there. So just by putting in a line that mirrors that angle, that gives you the tilt of the head which is describing an awful lot about this pose. The next thing I did was just to mark in a line for the top of the head, and again, I can match that angle, and then the bottom of the head. So we've basically just got four lines. And then, keeping things simple, I can do a simple curve for the front of the face. I'm not worried about the protrusion of the nose, I just want this curve here for the front of the face. And then the back of the bun is just a simple oval. So now what you've got is the width of the head, the height of the head, and the angle. But essentially just an oval and another oval there with a line here, a line across the top, a line across the bottom. And then for the facial features themselves, they're just simple triangles. So for the nose, if you look at the angle of the, the top of the nose, all it is is a simple triangle shape. And you can put the shadow shape in as well, so that shadow shape that we're going to describe. So that's all I've put in. For the lips, another simple triangle shape. And then you can simply put in the angle of the chin, and then the angle of the jawline, the neck. The eye, again, is a simple triangle shape. So by putting that triangle shape in first, you can judge positions better. This doesn't have to, well, it's, this is not a portrait, so it doesn't have to be deadly accurate. All we want to put in is simple triangles, very simple shapes to just help get the proportions right. So I've just erased some of those lines back slightly, um, just keeps things a little bit cleaner. I'm going to use, I'm going to start with a medium charcoal pencil, but you could quite as easily use a dark charcoal pencil and just use a little bit less pressure initially. It really doesn't matter. So 
just so I can get a feel for things, I'm just going to start describing some of the shapes again. This helps me to get a feel for the charcoal pencil. So I can just strengthen some of the lines I know I can get away with. And then the hairline. And then there's just a glimpse of the ear there. We can put this nice strong line in as well. Although this line is in the center of the neck, so it splits the neck in two, don't forget that this half of the line is light. Um, so I want to put my dark line slightly towards the left. I'm not going to put this line in here now because um, this is going to be in the light. So we can put that in maybe with the light charcoal pencil. Um, we'll see what we do when we come to that. Now for the around the eye area, what I want to do is draw in this shadow shape. So just very lightly, very loosely, especially as you get to this area because this is not a harsh line. So I'm just going to draw this shadow shape in. You can even just use the side of your pencil to make sure you don't get that harsh line. The eye I can put in. So we've got our basic triangle in place. Just have a look for the pupil of the eye. Just put a small dot in. It'll look strange at now. It doesn't matter. And then the eyelash. We can refine that with uh, the white charcoal pencil as we come in later. And then the shadow shape of the nose. This is a really important one because it describes the cheek. So you can just take a little bit of time just to make sure you get the curvature that's on that. The top edge of the nose is dark so we can go in there. And then look at the shadow shape where it finishes. And then the nostril can go in there. And then we've got the triangle shape for the lips. So I'm going to split that triangle shape is there. So if I split that triangle shape in two, that gives me the mouth. And then, as I say, for this area is in the light, we want to use the white charcoal pencil for that. And the same with this top edge as well. So now that I've established some of those lines a bit more confidently, a bit darker, we can go in with some darker value. Now this area of the back of the head is really dark, so I'm going to take the dark charcoal pencil, and there's no need to, um, there's no need to be timid here. You can go as dark as you like. Just bearing in mind that there's a good chance you'll snap the pencil. So as much pressure as you think you can get away with. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave a little bit of a lighter area there just so there's a, a slight separation between the bun and the back of the head. And then it's really dark underneath, really dark up into the ear. And then the shape or the dark shape goes all the way across, doesn't it? So the whole side of the head is quite dark. So you can describe the ear with this dark value. And then as you get around here, just be a little bit careful now because you're starting to get into some lighter shapes. So you can just ease off with the pressure. It's a little bit of a lighter value down the back there. That's that um, reflected light. Okay, there's a dark area that describes this really strong muscle in the neck. And then dark value into the shoulder. So that's as far as I want to go before we need to look at drawing the rest of that. Um, area of the body in. So I know that's not going to be that light so I can go a little bit darker there. And then I'm going to switch to the medium charcoal pencil now. You could stay with the dark charcoal pencil, it doesn't really matter. This just use a bit less pressure, this just helps. And so now what I'm thinking about is the way that this value starts to soften off around as we start getting around the cheek area. So it's quite dark here, it's dark into the ear. Into the ear. And then this area here, I don't want to draw an outline because it's a soft edge. So I'm just, just as you would do with a sphere or a cylinder, shading those shapes. I'm just going to go over really softly over that line. That's a bit of a harder edge there. And it's much closer to the eye. I can afford to go further up there. And then dark all the way back. And then this is a hard edge here around the eyebrow, and then it softens off at the front of the forehead. So I want to leave an area there that's light. So that would be the front of the forehead there. So all the time I'm just looking backwards and forwards between the reference and between my drawing paper just to see where the hard edges are, where the soft edges are. So we've got some value that goes into the face. This is light under here dark area there and then you can just soften that line slightly so not as much pressure because that muscle in effect is, is like another cylinder 
and then you've got the nice shadow that goes all the way across and that describes the ear. Okay, and then let's put in the value for the nose. So this is quite a dark value, but there is a little tiny bit of light, just the slightest, thinnest edge. So what I'm going to do is just erase back uh, the line for the nose, the top of the bridge of the nose. And then I'm going to take the, the, this dark value just before the point at the top of where I think the nose would be. And that's going to allow me to put in just a really thin edge of uh, white charcoal in a moment. And it's a subtle detail, but it's one that will um, definitely just help to add to the sense of light. And then you want quite a sharp point on your pencil here, probably sharper than what I've got, because the mouth can be a little bit tricky. You might need to play about with this to get this right a couple of times, but that's okay. It will erase back if you need to. Okay, so let's go in with the white charcoal pencil now. So I can now put in the front edge of this lady's face and do the bottom of the nose. It's nice and light. And that real thin edge just on the top of the bridge of the nose. And there's some, if you look there, there's some nice um, highlight just above the eye. And make sure we get those in and just look at the care of that as well. Get a highlight just underneath the eye as well. And then this area here, we can add lots of highlights to as well. So don't rely on the marks that you've put down initially, the, 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 um, those initial drawing lines or even the ones that you put in with charcoal. Keep looking backwards and forwards at the reference just to make sure that you're not putting those marks down again, but this time incorrectly. All of this is nice and light under here. So I can do a nice light highlight down here. And then what we'll be able to do is describe this area of the chin just a little bit more, uh, make it a little bit more refined, a bit more accurately when we put in, we're gonna put some background value in there just to help that really stand out. And then for the ear, we just need to take this back a little bit. So what you can do is lose parts of that ear. She wouldn't be too happy about that, but just lose an area within there. And what it does is it just helps to then give a suggestion rather than you um, drawing this full ear shape in, so which tends to be a little bit more how it would appear in reality. So I'm just picking out some highlight areas there, just one highlight area at the top, and then I don't know if she's got an earring in or if it's just a little bit of light reflecting at the bottom. So that is the hardest bit out of the way. So you can spend more time on that than the rest of the drawing. The rest of this now is um, going to be quicker. You can start to have a little bit more fun now and relax a little bit. So I mentioned about the negative shapes. This is a really good one to look at. So I'm happy that that negative shape there is, is the same as this one. And then just draw in the arm. You can measure the angle of the arm if you want to. So you can put an angle through there. In terms of the width of the arm, that is important. But just make your best guess. Step back and see how it looks to your eye. Now when you get to this area here, we can start using checkpoints. So this curve where it curves round into the body, if I take a straight line up, vertical line up, where does that intersect the face? If I take a straight line up there, you can see it intersects the face through the edge of the ear behind the eye. So through the edge of the ear behind the eye, it's somewhere around here. So I'm probably a little bit too far forward. So I'm not concentrating on things. So can bring that shape back a bit there. And if you look at this angle here relative to this one, so this is describing the torso. So if you brought this line down here and then across, this line down here and then across, so this angle, just a straight line for now. We don't need to worry about curves. This is a great piece of negative space here. So we'll come back to that in a second and put that in. That's going to really help us. Arm needs to be a bit thicker. Okay, and then the same on this side. So look at the negative space there. So we've got this line here on this angle, and then you've got this 
flat edge here. So just put the flat edge in. Again, don't worry about the curve. Take a line across the shoulders. You can take that angle there. All of these checkpoints are all to help you. There isn't one that's better than the other. The more that you use, the easier that you'll find things. So now we want the length of the torso. So this, uh, this line here. So the angle of it's fairly straightforward, but how do we know whether to put the angle here? Is it down here? Is it up here? And the way that you can describe that is by looking at this negative space here, or this negative shape. So we've got this angle down here, we've got a straight line there for this part, and then it bends out. And then to get the end of this point, we draw a vertical line up, it goes to the chin. So down from the chin, so the actual point of where the dress finishes comparative to the rest of the pose is around about here. So now we can say this shape needs to be a bit bigger, so bring that angle up. And then put the dress in, again looking at the space, this negative shape. And bring that across. We're going to keep this really loose, so I'm going to keep that a really light line for now. I may even erase that. But in terms of the in terms of the actual shape of the space, I'm quite happy with that. I think that shape there is a, the same shape as that, albeit a bit larger. And then relatively easy just to draw our angled line across. That gives us this side of the dress and down on that angle, something like that. And then the actual width of, uh, size of the dress is gonna be somewhere in that region. So all I need to do now is draw the dress in. So this point here, just have a look where that is roughly. It's in the center of the chest, but of course, because the pose is on a slight angle, the center of the chest is more towards the left, uh, is more towards the right, sorry. And point there is on line with the bottom of the arms. So in that region there, and then we can just draw in the top of the dress. And that intersects the arm around about the middle of the arm. And then just draw in the shadow shape. So this is just going to help you when you come to do the shading in a second. You just draw in a rough shadow shape. And I think we're ready to add some detail to that. So it's up to you where you start. You could start with the light side, with the white charcoal pencil, or the shadow side. I'm going to go with the shadow side. I'm going to get that out of the way. And then we'll come in uh, with the white charcoal pencil. So for this arm, just again closely observe observe both the shape and the value and if you notice under here we've got some reflected light so I do want to capture that the dark line if I put one in would be the background but I'm not going to put any background in there so I want this edge of this line here to be a light line so I'm going to need to erase that back let's just put the dark in for now and for those of you that took my advice and did some basic shapes um, from one of the earlier lessons you remember that a cylinder, the darkest part of a cylinder, is not the outer edge, because that always gets some reflected light. It is typically down the center, or towards the center, and not the very edge. So the darkest area is here, and that's really dark in here. There's a bit of light just under the arm there, so I'm going to reserve that just to describe the armpit. And then as we get to this outer edge, it softens off. Dark around here, really dark in here. There's a little bit of light there, so we can leave that area. And then it goes really dark here. This is in real heavy shadow. And then softens off. I might switch to the medium charcoal pencil for that bit there. And then switch to the medium charcoal pencil if you've got one or a little bit less pressure with a, a dark charcoal pencil if you haven't. So I said that this area was going to be a, uh, a lighter edge where there's some reflected light. So I'm just going to erase that back. The white charcoal pencil might be a little bit too light because although it's reflected light, it's not a highlight or a bright light. So I'm just going to touch very gently with that pencil. Don't want to create a lot of um, too much contrast there. It is a subtle shape. You want to go over it with the light, uh, lighter charcoal pencil you can do. And just notice how the shadows just soften off around this area. And then 
Look at this shadow shape here. So this is only a small triangle. So just look at that shape because it describes uh, the collarbone, all kinds of different structures. That's a really nice shape to get in and one that is worth just taking a bit of time just to make sure that you do get the correct shape. And then we've got the shadow shape on this arm. So just draw the shape in to start with. Again, not too heavy because it's not going to be a sharp line. There is some softening off on the edge of that line. And this area here, if you just use sideways strokes, that just helps to get, or well, helps to avoid that really harsh line over the top. And then you can go dark in here. This is a nice dark edge, a nice sharp edge. And then softens off lighter there where there's the reflected light. Dark in here. And there's a nice bit of reflected light there. And then we can put some shadow uh, values in here. So if you look at this shadow shape, the darkest shadow shape is around here, isn't it? So it's not all one dark shadow. You've got lots of reflected light going on there. So I'm just going to try and follow the curves of the dress slightly as I put these in. So there's, I'm seeing an S shape there. I've got the darkest values here, and then they lighten off. This area is still in shadow, it's just a lot lighter. You can see even though this is a white dress, how when it's deep in shadow, it's almost as dark as any other value in the, in the uh, picture. So I can go with some darker darks in there, but again, just remember, or just observe, that you're not going all the way across, and you're going all the way to this side, it's the center of the shape that, is the, that has the darkest values. And then look at the dark shadow there, that is a real harsh line, nice sharp line that describes that shape. And then there are some shadow shapes within this side of the dress. We can add those in. Okay, I think it's time for us to go in with the, with the white charcoal pencil and just to pick out some of the highlights. So starting from the top, we've got a nice highlight on the collarbone there. It's definitely worthy picking out. And then the opposite one there, just the peak of that. And then this value is not the lightest value, so I'm just going to touch a little bit of the white in there, but not too much. We want to overemphasize that area. Here, we've got a real light area right to the bottom of the arm. But then just soften it off as you get towards that uh, darker value. So just softening off around there. Really light here can't distinguish between where the arm finishes and the dress starts on that corner piece. This is a nice light line. A highlight just on the dress there. Got a bit of a highlight on the skin just outside the dress. And then all of this area nice and light. There's no details in this part. I'm going to get rid of this dark line here. I definitely want that outer edge to be a light edge. Same for the dress. And then if you want to pick out some of the creases um, with the white pencil, you can do on this. It, it's a white dress at the end of the day, so going over the, with the white pencil is not going to cause any issues. Just be sure not to make the, the overall value too light, because it is in the shadow. It's darker than anything that's in the light side of the composition. So one of the last things to do now is the dress. Um, we wanted to keep this quite loose, didn't we? Like the Edgar, uh, inspired by the Edgar Degas um, study. So what I've got is a broken piece of willow charcoal. If you don't have this, you can use the pastel pencil. Just use it side on maybe. And all I'm gonna do, keep it really loose, is just put in just an impression of the dress. No more than that, just a few strokes with, with the side of the charcoal. I can maybe put a bit of a darker mark in there where there's a shadow and just that part of the dress there. And then with the white charcoal pencil, you can just add your highlights. So I've got some nice white highlight there. I just want to add a few flecks in, just 
letting the, dance, uh, the pencil dance around more than anything else. And then for this side, really loose, really sketchy, and really quick. So as I get to the centre, I'm going to use fewer marks because that value there uh, is starting to move into the shadow. So I can have more here, maybe use the side of the pencil. And then light, likewise that we've got some lights there, we can just add um, one or two darks here, just a few. And then just to finish up, I think it'd be nice to add a little bit of background, just a little bit of value around this area here. Nothing detailed, um, just a little bit of flat tone, and I think that's going to really lift uh, the face because of the contrast between the light edge and the dark background. So I'm just going to add it around this area here. What I have done is sharpened um, the charcoal pencil to a nice point so that I can draw around a bit more confidently around the facial features, um, and then all I'm going to do is just then roughly and loosely fill it in. So we'll speed things up while I do that, and then we'll come back when it's finished. So there we go, there's our ballerina in black and white charcoal.